In question 12 of this series, we're asked, assume that the strength of a rectangular beam varies as its width and the square of its depth. So this is a direct variation where the strength varies according to its width and the square of its depth. Find the dimensions of the strongest beam that can be cut from a round log 30 centimeters in diameter. Let's pretend that this circle is the log and its diameter is 30. The diameter is the measure of the distance across the center of a circle. So from here to here, from here to here, that's 30 centimeters. And we'll work to three significant figures because the number they gave us is three significant figures. And to model a relationship based on that first sentence, we'll write down S for strength is equal to K, a constant, and you always write down the constant if you're generating a direct variation equation, times the width times the square of the depth, which I'll call d squared. Now just to be consistent with the diagram, I'm going to relabel this w as x and relabel the depth as y. So instead of w and d, I'll write down s is equal to k for my constant times x times y squared. Next, I need to come up with a formula that relates both x and y. If you look closely, the Pythagorean theorem works best. The Pythagorean theorem relates x and y as x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse, and in our case, it's 30. 30 squared or 900. Now, I've placed a line on top of that zero because we are working to three significant figures. And if I don't place that line, then it's assumed that this 900 is one significant figure. Next, what I'll do is isolate for y squared and substitute the content for y squared into my main equation that provides the strength of the beam. So if I rearrange this formula, I end up with 900 minus x squared is my depth. So this will be replaced with that, giving us s is equal to k times x times 900 minus x squared. What I can do next is come up with the derivative of this function with respect to x, then subsequently set that function equal to zero and come up with my critical points. My critical points tell me whether there's a minimum or maximum at that value. Then after that, we can decisively find out whether it is a maximum or minimum via another test, which we'll discuss after we find the derivative. Taking the derivative of s, we get ds over dx is equal to, and this time I'll use the product rule. So this is one of my products, and this is my second product. Taking the derivative of kx is simply k, remember k is a constant, and we'll leave this part the same. 900 minus x squared. Now I'll take the derivative of this expression, which is easy. This becomes 0, and that becomes negative 2x. Plus negative 2x times this expression. We don't touch that expression. kx. Before I set this equal to 0, I want to see if I can clean up the right side of the equation first. So I'll multiply these two together. That will give us negative 2x squared k, or negative 2kx squared. And at the same time, I'll set this equal to 0 and solve for my x. I've also noticed that you can probably multiply this k into these two terms. That will likely help in the process. So I'll do that. 900k minus kx squared minus 2x squared k. These two terms are alike, and I'll combine them it becomes negative 3kx squared, negative 3kx squared. I'll bring this over. Negative 900k is equal to negative 3kx squared. We can cancel out one of the k's and divide both sides by negative 3 gives us 300 is equal to x squared. If I square root both sides now, I end up with x is equal to plus minus 17.3 centimeters. We will discard the negative value, of course, 
giving us a depth of, and we'll use this number to substitute it into here using my calculator, 900 minus 17.3 to the power of 2, square root both sides, that gives us 24.5 as my depth. So y is equal to 24.5 centimeters. Now we have to ask, does positive 17.3 actually give us the maximum or minimum strength? The way we test for that is we take the second derivative of our function, which was this. We take the second derivative and substitute positive 17.3. If the output of that function is positive, then it's a minimum, and the opposite is true if it is negative. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative of this function, which is not hard to do. We'll write down d squared s over dx. This becomes 0. It's a constant. Taking the derivative of a constant is 0. This becomes negative 2kx. And this becomes negative 4xk. And I use the power rule for both of these terms. These are both like terms, so I can combine them before substituting 17.3. I don't need to do that, but it looks nicer. Negative 6kx. And when x is equal to 17.3, substituting this number into here will give us a negative value. A negative output means there is a maximum at 17.3 width. Therefore, 24.5 is the correct depth that will maximize the strength. And there you have it. That is how to solve optimization problems in calculus. Make sure to watch question 13 for another example.